Hello and welcome to Triangle B and I. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech. Oak City Tech gives their clients an edge over their competition with web and logo design that make them stand out. They increase brand awareness, generate leads with SEO and social media presence, then convert them into leads to help you grow your business. Founded in Raleigh in 2009, Oak City Tech works with businesses, organizations, and brands around the country. Go to oakcitytech.com to see how they, they can help you grow your business. Tell Drago that we said hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Manning, and each week we bring you small business success stories from BNI. BNI is Business Networking International in the Triangle here, Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. If you're not familiar with North Carolina, we've got 30 chapters going. 600 people meet each week. We all help each other grow our business. Our guest today is Chris Thoreau. Chris is a property and casualty specialist at MetLife. Chris, glad to have you here today. Great. Thanks for having me. Chris uh, flew in from Tampa this morning, so he's wired, ready to go. Four <laughs> cups of coffee on the plane, sitting in line for two hours at the airport, right? Actually, no coffee. No coffee. Oh, yet. really? Yes. Impressive. I know. That's will, the, will, the, will the hit come later about <laughs> 1.30 or 2 o'clock? <laughs> Chris is in RD29. The name of the chapter is Visa V. They meet Thursday mornings at 7.30 at Hope Community Church on Buck Jones Road in Raleigh. If you are a morning person, A, this is a wonderful chapter to be in. If you're not a morning person, this is a wonderful chapter to be in because the uh, the crowd is rather entertaining. Yes. They do good business good business together, but a lot of the folks there have known each other a while, so they will wake you up on a Thursday morning. You are vice president there. I am. A uh, renewed role for October 1 coming on. That's correct. That tells me you're good with numbers yes. or you weren't at the meeting when they said we need a <laughs> vice president, right? I like the numbers. There you go. Insurance. We all think we know what we need, what we have, why we need it. A property and casualty is your wheelhouse. I'm the research I did on this show, not as many people as I thought had insurance, especially <laughs> auto insurance. Right. Uh they're they're just they're rolling the dice, right? If you don't have auto insurance. Yes, yes. So they're um the stats are out there. A lot of people do not have yeah. um coverage at all or even adequate coverage. I saw one in eight. Yes. The problem that we don't think about, and it took me years to learn this as well, is if I'm driving without insurance, you're going to have to be properly covered just to take care of your own stuff that I wrecked without having insurance. Exactly. That's so, why, you, why you need to review your coverages. <laughs> and you do that. And a lot of one of the neat things about B&I is we get to know you as Chris. Yes, you work for MetLife. Uh, but you're Chris, we have your cell phone number. We can call at any point in time. And there's a reason why certain s jobs like that, you want to know the person. So I can call you, you know, my history. I know you've gotten calls late at night and on weekends, right? Right. Hey, Chris, quick question. Just asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> How often does your phone ring after hours? You know, I've gotten lucky in the industry. I haven't had any really huge claims. Um, I think most of my after-hour calls are my realtors um, wanting quotes. Okay. That, that's, um, that's what I'm here for. Okay. We, again, we picture back in the day, I think Ward Cleaver was in insurance. Okay. Suit and tie, going to work every day. And that's not your world these days. You are a marketer as much as you are an insurance person, right? I believe so. Yes. I mean, working 24 yeah, seven on the marketing. Do you like that side of it? I do. I, that's what I enjoy doing the most. I like going out, meeting new people, helping other people build their businesses um, in turn, you know, reaping the benefits of that. You are in, in B and I, we stay each, each week, each person stands up and depending on the size of the group, it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds or 60 seconds on your speech. And a lot of people stand up and tell what they do, right. which is good because we need to know that. I just always thought anybody on the insurance side, dude, you're providing peace of mind. Exactly. And you've got auto, home, life. What else can you write for anybody listening? A quick story. Umbrellas. Yes. I, I've always told people with an umbrella, you need to have assets or you want to protect your assets with an umbrella. I recently ran into someone that was low income, had two jobs, had decent coverage at a different company, 100, 300, but his wife hit someone, hurt him pretty bad, and the hospital bills are well over 300,000 for one person. 
So he's hoping the attorney can get it under 300, but he's still going to have to owe over 200,000, which he says, I don't have that. Well, they're going to garnish his wages. So most umbrellas are going to cost you about five bucks a week. You can avoid that. So it's not really protecting your assets now. It's protecting everything. So what all, what all does the umbrella cover? Liability. So, I mean, if you're at fault at that wreck, you know, yep. if you ran a red light, as long as it's not neglect, um, umbrellas can cover from dog bites on your property or a dog got out, oh. trampoline in your backyard. Okay. Um, as long as all this is documented, you know, yeah. um, those kind of accidents, someone slips and falls in your house, breaks a leg. You only have 300 in liability, you know, can cover the excess of that as well. Is that the maximum amount for an umbrella? Oh, no. Umbrellas can go, you know, a few million. Okay. Yes. Um, typical people start with the million and work their way up. So for every day, me and you, normal stuff, normal size house, normal family. Yeah. I mean, start with a million. Um, I'm not going to say that, you know. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, write it. But um, yeah, at least have the coverage, you know, to protect yourself for, for minimal amounts. So. In a million cover, how much is, how much? A month is roughly a, a million dollar policy for somebody. Four to six dollars. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that's there. That's on top of once a regular insurance, whatever that is, covers. And then the, for example, in the house, you have homeowners insurance. Somebody comes on your property through your fault, or does it have to be negligence on? Let's say they fall off your back deck. Right. Uh, neighborhood party. Everybody's having a good time, grilling out some burgers. Right. You know, maybe a beer or two, but nothing major, and somebody falls off your deck. Right. Are you the homeowner responsible for that? Yes, so it's your home. I mean, even if they did something stupid. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's blatant neglect, yeah. and you know, you can your attorney can prove. Uh, okay. You know, they did that on purpose to sue you. Once again, that's going to be, mm. you know, decided in the court of law. And no. Yeah, exactly. So that. Would your homeowners, would they, would the homeowners pay that first and then the umbrella comes after that or does it go straight to the umbrella? Yeah, generally your, your homeowner's going to get the first limit of your liability on your homeowners, 100, 300,000 will cover and then the umbrella will satisfy whatever judgment's left. Does a million, would a million cover most of the cases you've seen? Cases I've seen, yes. Um personally um I, there is cases every day i mean oh, when yeah. you have i mean accidental accidents happen with fatalities yeah and a million's not going to replace somebody so um especially if you're found at fault it's going to be it's going to be over that if and then if the let's say the judgment's 1.5 and all you've got is a million right in coverage so that extra half million they're just going to garnish, garnish wages until it's paid up correct so wow if you have assets, they'll go after your assets. Okay. Um, they'll go after that first, but yes, they will burn. It, does the umbrella cover if you've got a beach house? Right. Is that, I, I guess it, nothing's off limits if you're at fault. Right. So they'll go then to the beach house, maybe force you to sell it. They could. Ooh. But if you had the umbrella, it could help protect your, once again, it's there to protect your assets. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you have it. Do, uh, of your, or in the insurance world, how many of us are smart enough to have an umbrella? Tiny? I No, honestly, there's a lot of good agents out there. A lot okay. of my competition, good agents out there. Um, when we're discussing their insurance needs, going over everything, we're telling people about this. And people understand, really. Um, they understand the importance of coverages with, you know, higher liabilities on homeowners and auto and the umbrella. So. People are understanding what they need. What I've learned over the years with insurance, either auto or home, is when there's a life change, new baby, new car. And I know you love when you check up on your clients and, you know, just calling, hey, Chris, checking in again, got this coming up, whatever it is. Right. And they go, oh, yeah, we bought a new car three <laughs> months ago and didn't tell you. Right. Or sold one, right. and they're still pay and didn't tell you, and they're still paying for that. Right. We don't, we're not good at that, are we? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got. It's funny. I, I've got a current new client, and he um, he's been very on top of it. So oh, yeah. it, it, you know, when you brought that up, but he's got a special order BMW, so I, I know exactly when it's going to arrive. Okay. Well, 
yeah, close to when it's going to arrive. So right now we've just he sold one BMW, but we're waiting on the new one to come. So I'll All get right. a, I'll get the call in the next you know week or so that it's here. Do you get a ride in that to lunch? That's it's gonna be a nice one. So <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> We probably don't think things that should be covered need to be covered around the house. I know homeowners means a lot of things to a lot of people, but what all is involved in what some things that that might cover? It covers more than you would think. Um, that good point is if you're looking about your homeowners, take a video, take your phone, walk around your house, video every single thing because you might have things jotted down. But when a storm comes, those notepads get destroyed. Um, you forget yeah. things. Um, so, And I know you've talked about that before is just personal property. And I think the discussion you were talking about one day was jewelry. Exactly. And it was just so simple. You said just videotape it so you have it. Right. And most I, most of us, we. And most you know, home, there's, so there's actually a few different policies in North Carolina, HE3s, HE7s. So different policies only allow you to have up to a certain amount of jewelry, 1500 Most people are sitting on those type of homeowners policies. So you do need to schedule those or even get other policies for okay. those. Um, the jewelries, the golf clubs, the guns, um, any type of high value collectible. Um, you really need to think about making sure that that is covered properly. But, and we're not talking a lot of money no, to no, do that. No. And I guess maybe... I wonder if that's one of the hesitations, people. If somebody's got a fifty thousand dollar wedding ring, like, well, I couldn't afford to cover it, and really, they could if they called you, exactly. and you could walk them through, and it's right. What five bucks a month, maybe more? Um, fifty thousand is going to look up more like okay. twelve bucks. But okay, but but again, <laughs> exactly, you're paying one hundred forty four dollars a year to cover fifty thousand. Right. I like when life comes down to simple math equations. Exactly. Like, okay, let's get yeah, it. Yeah, it's do not this. good. Yeah, <laughs> it's like when you finance a new house. I mean. Am I going to add the screen fortune and finance it yeah. in? You're just adding another piece to the homeowner. Yeah. So. One of the favorite questions. I've not had this happen, but it's the neighbor's tree <laughs> that falls on your house. I have no, I just, no comment. <laughs> I love that. Okay. By law, how does that break out? Your <laughs> personal opinions aside, by law, how does that break out? Uh, I don't, I, I, it, it just, it depends. It if really, your tree falls on my house, I had nothing to do with it. I've got to replace my, or my insurance covers my own roof. Or can I take you to court and sue you because you got two Bentleys in the driveway? <laughs> it's, it's once again, it's on the neglect. Okay. Yeah. So if, if the tree fell and it was a perfectly good tree, it's going to be on your house. Okay. If the tree was sitting there rotting and uh, you've okay. made notes of this tree <clears throat> rotting, you asked the neighbor and you've documented that you've asked the neighbor. Perfect. You can actually, yeah, you can go after. Okay. So right. it's, it's once again, it's neglect. That's who you're going to find out. So, so you can cover yourself if, if we're neighbors and you've got a dead tree leaning over our common fence. Right. And I documented two times. I went over there to ask you, are you going to do anything about right. it? Uh, I've done everything I need to do. Right. Pictures. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if the tree's rotten, you're, yeah. your neighbor is now performing neglect. Okay. So. All right. Good. That, yeah. But it's stuff like that. We don't, we don't think about, but I just love that story because. Yeah. It happens enough. It thankfully it does. It to does, me, and then you, you know, some neighbors you never talk to again. I mean, it just. <laughs> so, <laughs> you are from Florida, but you weren't doing insurance in Florida. No, you were financial, right, right at the time. Those policies are completely different. Well, not completely different, but considerably different from North Carolina, just because the hurricanes and more more flooding at least. Right. Those can't be a lot of fun to write. It, but you get the calls. Actually, I saw you. This was a couple, I saw a couple weeks ago. It was the day before, I forget the hurricane name that was headed towards the coast. Right. And you would say, I asked you, when's the cutoff date? Right. And there is. Generally, and who sets that when you can't buy any more insurance? The companies. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so when a storm comes, we can go on moratorium, stop riding. Um, good thing this storm, a lot of my competitors stopped riding about seven days before the storm. We actually never stopped in really? Wake County. So we wrote all the way through this last storm. So I didn't think that thing was even, it was coming near us, but I don't think it was ever supposed to come much inland. I knew we were going to get some wind and rain, but it's the cone, the whole, you know, okay. with, with the, I mean, underwriters know what they're doing and 
risk adjuster. Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone knows if if they're within that cone, they're not. Gonna okay. <laughs> we are here with with Chris Thoreau, a property and casualty specialist with MetLife Insurance. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech, where we help you reach your goals with proven technologies for increasing traffic, leads, and sales. Go to oakcity.com, send Drago a note, tell him we said hi. He will help your business grow. Here we are towards the end of September. So now we're looking at fall and winter, ice storms, snowstorms, all that stuff. What should people be looking at as far as their coverage goes for winter weather now? I mean, it's the same in the summer. Just make sure you have the correct coverages, but then watch your stuff. I mean, when it freezes outside, watch your pipes. Okay. Um, make sure your personal property, your personal equipment is in the top shape. Because that's generally pipe first, you flood water, then we call Chris. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where... <laughs> Dowdell, I'm exactly. with you now. Yeah, okay. that's, and that's another reason why people should have an agent. If not with me, yes. with my competition. If you have a good agent, you have their cell number. Mm-hmm. Because a, a water pipe bust might not be worth your 1000 or $2,500 deductible. And that's why a good agent has a good restoration company like Chris Dowdell. Yep. I can call him most of the time and sometimes save the customer a claim okay. for deductible. That was actually one of the questions I have, so that's a great lead into it. Our assumption is we call the insurance 1-800 number. And that's not, you've explained this to me numerous times, that's not necessarily the first, that's not your recommendation. Right. I come home, my house, I was gone this weekend. So I come home Sunday night, my house, there's water on the floor, standing water on the floor, open the front door, here comes the water coming out. Who who should I call first? My insurance person? If you, if you feel comfortable, that's why we're there. We're, that's right. what we make the money for. Realistically, if you have a good restoration company, I know you're okay. well connected. I would call the restoration company. Okay. Um, some local news channels even did, because one of our um, on your side type people mm. had two claims. One was a zero dollar claim, and if you do call the insurance company first, and then you do it on your own, it's ninety nine percent of the time you're going to get a, what's called a zero dollar claim, which we're going to end up rating you on. So. And that's another question I have. We're going to come back to that in a second. But a lot of times, so if there's water on my floor and I call Chris Dowdell, uh, uh, service master, and he comes out and says, here's what they clean it up. They get the house dried and everything. And then they give me an estimate of what it's going to be. And if that estimate's $2,000, but my coverage is close to that, I'm, and you may or may not be able to say this, but it would make sense for me to pay the two grand out of pocket to save for that. (laughs) <laughs> Let me say this, okay? In my mind, I would pay the two thousand out of pocket to save for the big emergency one day. It's going to cost fifteen thousand, and that's when, in my mind, I would want my insurance to kick in. Right. You mentioned the zero dollar claims. So I come home. There's something minor that happened in my house, and I call the one eight hundred number of whoever my insurance is, and they come out, somebody would come out. How do we get to the zero dollar claim? So I've heard some companies, once you call, it's activated. Okay. Sometimes once the adjuster comes out. All right. So the, the biggest story and no company names or anything, no. but the storm chasers will run after the reputable roofing companies and tell you that all these roofs were replaced because of hail. And a lot of times when when the insurance company adjuster comes out and they say, well, you've only got this panel of damage. And then the company wants to replace a eight by 12 sheet of plywood. And then you've got this patch. So that's okay. an example of a zero dollar claim because a lot of people, they don't want an eight by 12 brand new patch of shingles no. showing the rest of their roof. No, so, I do not want that. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like a lot of companies that have, had to resort to that because of these storm chasers taking advantage of hailstorms. Oh, and there's plenty of those. Yes. Plenty of those. You see, if you see a mailbox hanger after a hailstorm, just rip. You can do whatever you want. Our advice is just <laughs> rip it up. Call somebody you know and trust. Call somebody like Chris. It, but you are as much an educator right. as you are as a policy writer. Yes. Because somebody, so a hailstorm comes through, right. 
and you would want to talk your client through their options. Yes. Yeah. And I, I you know, 15 years as a financial advisor, I was a fiduciary mm-hmm. and I feel the same way. You mentioned, I mean, I'm not considered a fiduciary. I'm considered an agent, but I, I want to help inform people, help mm-hmm. them through you know, the tough times that they're going to have. And most of us have rarely ever filed a claim, I would say. So we don't know when, what, how, and why, or the ramifications of that claim. So a lot of times we just give me the option. I know me, just give me my options and what you would recommend. But a lot of times we don't, I would have never known till about five or six years ago till I got into BNI, started meeting some uh, BNC people like yourself. What I'd never heard of a $0 claim. And my first thought would be, oh, here's my insurance. I'll call the one eight hundred number. I tell you, this, between the zero dollar claim and then um, the Matthew, yeah. Once again, people with lower price insurance or just calling the one eight hundred number, people were calling and we, my former company, we had thousands of spoilage claims. So what that means is the refrigerator, the power went out. Mm-hmm. So they were doing a claim for two hundred, three hundred dollars. Yeah. So you have a zero dollar claim and then you have a three hundred dollar claim. That's two. You're going to have over half the companies not want to write you. Over, just over that number? Because two claims. It doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah. Once you get two claims. Okay. It starts popping up in system. Some companies are really buckling down on one large claim. So, it's just, if you have a spoilage, I know it's been bad. Power has been out. Call your agent. Talk to them a little bit. Yeah. To, I mean, yeah, you're going to get $200 with free groceries. But. Oh, at, at the end of the day. End of the day. It's, and again, like I said earlier, I'm banking on that big, right. the house is right. burned. And I understand. I, I get I get this thrown back in my face. Well, I pay for insurance. I'm going to use it. I, I understand that. You mm-hmm. are paying for the insurance. Use it when it's 100%. Yes. Oh, I agree on that. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I know when the microphone I, I was, comes down, you, <laughs> you just, hit on something good. No, I was, I was just wondering. In, in a car, there is liability. Yes, sir. Comprehensive, and then there's collision. I don't know how it is today, but comprehensive, when you have a claim, it doesn't raise your, or does it? Because I remember it didn't. So is, oh. oh. There's people that abuse it. Yeah, I understand. So Uh generally, it shouldn't. But there's. So if you drove and and a truck threw a rock and broke your windshield. Right. And you claim that. Right. Then. Your insurance, your your premium normally doesn't go up. Majority of the time. Is there something like this in homeowners that there are certain claims that do not bring it up and people don't use it? Not in North Carolina. I mean, in okay. North Carolina, like we said, the $0 claim or the $500, $200 food spoilages. I mean, you look at some of these claims, you're like, why didn't you just yeah. call somebody? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. But... We do quotes all the time, and people, I mean, you get some people that think a new windshield is, they're just, I mean, they, they're they allowed to get one every year, and you, you really, and insurance companies <laughs> see that, and they're going to get rated. I mean, it's, yeah. but <laughs> can I go back to the license? One? Yes, so, please. <laughs> this this is why you need to check your limits. So the, the, the people that, what was the? Eight out of seven out of ten, or seven percent, ten percent don't have insurance. One out of eight, yeah. One out of eight, so twelve percent. Yeah. That's why you need to check your coverages because you're mm-hmm. uninsured, underinsured people. That's where your liabilities will be higher. Because I mean, lots of live PD. Almost everybody they pull over. <clears throat> but away from that, people, North Carolina, we're not a computer-based insurance system. <laughs> so, at my old firm, we would get calls, three, four calls a day, people will pay for that one month of insurance, get their insurance card, which says they have insurance for the next six months and disappear. So now for five months, they can get pulled over, show a card and be fine. And then when that six months is over, they shop again. And it's a a vicious cycle because you see they've been at a different carrier every six months. They'll pay the high first month premium, but then they disappear. And they don't have it for five months. It, that's why I tell people you have to have the adequate coverage just to protect your family. Not really liability if you get sued. I mean, you've got to have that. But 
when you're looking at your insurance coverage, just picture what you want for your family. All right, a couple things here to unpack for me. <laughs> One is, this is my home state. I love this state, but there's no computer system that you could pull up immediately to show. Not for the police. Now the DOT, they'll find. I mean, we get FS ones all the time, which means we have to send them that they had, you know, proof of liability. Yeah. Which is another archaic system. Sorry. <laughs> but, no. I'm... Um. No. The the sheriff or police officer troopers. They just want to see the paper card. They really don't have like any system. Which is why they ask you for your license. Well, no, they just ask you for your license and registration. And they. Yeah. Yeah. But st so they can't, when they pull that over, they got information on the license plate, which tells them in theory who owns the car, which tells them in theory who's driving it. Right. But the insurance, they don't. You don't. Pay your insurance. We'll, re we'll report it. You no, know, DOT will know right away and they send you something. Say, hey, yeah, the DMV, your right. plate is no good. Right. But so the policeman would know. Well, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't correspond that really? way. Yeah. Hmm. The <laughs> other part of this is I, I'm intrigued. They, I don't They like the shop because, I mean, they're not going to go to jail for no insurance with that card. I mean, that's, They've got the card. They'll just get a ticket for yeah. driving without and insurance. Uh, and Apex Police, amazing. Um, I've had them actually call twice my old office. Really? Because the person didn't have a card. They promised they had coverage. Apex Policeman, okay, well, let's call. Nice. And, yes. And yep. we've, we've gotten we've got two people out of trouble those ways. So I'm Did not, you not, sign them right there? Huh? <laughs> Did you sign them up right there? No, no, they're actually existing. Oh, they were? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And what happens when somebody comes to you who's pulling that trick do you as an insurance agent have the data online that you can say oh look they hop and hop and hop and hop can you call the last insurance company and say did they i mean do, do you do that you can um but I'll, you don't so I mean, <laughs> my old position was a numbers game my current position is more i'm looking for quality customers so no, our old position, we would see it. We knew it was coming. We knew that we're, they're, they were going to lapse. The, everything was just going to go away. So it's it's pretty blatant when you've been in the business for a while. It, it, it's going to happen. I mean, because the other companies, they'll have the records. I mean, look at their insurance report. And they paid on the 13th. Their policy lapsed on the 20th. And then that was January. And now we're in June and they're buying again. So if I come to you tomorrow, you could pull up and find out who I've had insurance with and for how long. Yeah. So those red flags are immediate if you see yeah. six months, a year, stuff like that. I'm I don't condone what they do, but I'm very intrigued by the people who who try to beat the system. Very impressed by that. Uh, use their powers for good. That would be nice. <laughs> but it's just it's a shell game. They're just gambling that they're not going to get pulled over. And if they do, they can just say, yeah, I've got. Right. And that's where it comes back to you having adequate coverage. Can you be overcovered as a driver? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> I've got a 2006 Toyota Camry. Right. Does everything I need, right. which is just drive around town with good gas mileage. Right. I mean, we don't want the car replaced. You can drop the collision. But once okay. again, you drop the collision, you're going to lose other coverages. So it's really, I mean, I know you've got a grand. Grandson. Grandson. Yep. And I mean, that's where it comes back to can I be overinsured? I mean, what if the yeah. you could never walk again yeah. in, a, in an accident? I mean, that's you're going to want them to be taken care of for 70, 80 years. Yeah. I mean, if someone hit you and pulled off and had no insurance coverage, yeah. it's on okay. yours. So. I got you. So it's hard to say, am I, <laughs> can I have too much? Yeah. You can be. And I get that. Yeah. I don't need the coverage your friend with the new BMW coming out <laughs> right. for my 06 Toyota exactly. Camry, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, I got you on that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's, and we, yeah, and we don't think of that. We don't think of that part of it. We just figure out oh, we'll swap insurance card. Mm -hmm. My insurance company will, re, will repair, replace whatever your car and we'll just move on with it. And right. sometimes there's yeah. way more to it. First week I moved up here, 
friend of mine from Florida was riding a bike um, on NC State property. And he rode right out in front of a car, a car hit him, killed him. Ooh. Good thing for that car, you know, they weren't at fault. Yeah. But it's one of those things. You never know what can happen. And, and I hate to ask this question, but I believe it's true. There's a price on body parts and accidents and illnesses and everything. <laughs> there kind of is, isn't there? But well, there kind of needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. In a, in a weird way. Right. Oh. Uh, I, yeah. So it, covered correctly is what you want to be. But you get that by knowing your agent and staying in touch right. with them. And especially if there's any changes. Right. Okay. All right. And do a review. If you're going to do a yep. review with your financial advisor, do a review with your insurance agent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's some of the agents that have to sell other products. I can barter by that. But still, if you've been with your agent for a long time, go in there and just sit with them for five, 10 minutes and review it. Because it doesn't good. take long. Exactly. If I, I mean, a 2006 is a 2006. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Run through the line items, make sure nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah. and it all works for me. It's, oh, Mike, you got a 2016 now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leak a little oil right down the driveway, but you know what? I can fix that real pretty quick. So we are here with, with Chris Thoreau, MetLife Insurance. He's a property and casualty specialist. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech. They give their clients an edge over the competition with their, their web and logo design. It will make you stand out. They also will help you uh, generate leads with SEO and social media presence. They will help you grow your business. Go to oakcitytech.com. Send him a note. Tell Drago we said hi. He will help you grow your business. Now, one of the common myths of the insurance world is you're playing golf all the time. That being said, I, I say that to say this. People who don't play golf don't know the value of four hours with a client. Right. And then they go, but you could have done that in 12 minutes. Like, yeah, but you meet somebody that could lead you to 15 or 20 <laughs> clients. Yeah, so I'm going to go play golf. But you enjoy golf. You played golf. Uh, how's the new drive shack? You've been out there? Once. Okay. Once, yes. All right. How'd you do? I did good. I did good. The bad thing is I was there during one of the VIP pre yep. parties and I was in a bay right next to a long drive champion. Ooh. So this guy was actually hit. If you've been to drive shack, yep. he was hitting it over the back. Of the yeah. So. Into um, oncoming traffic on. I think know. there's houses back there. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. So, well, I don't live there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should I'm go knock on those I'm doors. I'm barely hitting the net, and this guy is, <laughs> he's flying the net. You could get some new, <laughs> some new clients go knock on the doors. There's a long driving champion who's hitting over the fence the other day. I heard he's coming back next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but golf is important to you. How's your game these days? Um, it's taken a hit. I mean, I, I lived in Florida. I played yeah. 50 weeks out of the. Uh, I did I the mean, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing. It was it was actually more important as an advisor. I mean, that's yeah. Oh, where yeah. I met Huge. The majority of my clients. I actually met my wife. Yeah. From golf, so um, it's right. just yeah. Well, and that leads me actually. You're pretty good today. <laughs> you're pretty good. That was the next line item here talking about family. Uh, I always ask people, um, wife and three kids, and we'll get to the specifics here in a second. But I always ask people, how'd you meet your spouse? Right. And you both tell the story the same way. Yeah. All right. Tell us your story. Um. I was going after her dad's money and I, I got his debt. Not <laughs> I was <laughs> Was that in the wedding bell? Yeah, no, jokingly. Exactly. <laughs> jokingly. No. Um I was in a Thursday morning retirement league and um I just kept going back and she moved from Baltimore. Who she is in, she? Oh uh, Dana. Dana. Right, there you go. Uh very important. Hi Dana. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um she moved from Baltimore and she was in the Friday night league with mostly the women. It was a mixed league. Mm -hmm. And um they this is funny because the women put her on a blind date and it went totally bad. So then, you know, a week later, the guys, you know, old guys say, Hey, you should go out with this guy. It's, no, no, no. I just moved here. And no, 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 no. <laughs> so after about four calls, she finally answered the phone <laughs> and um, we hit it off. So. Would she explain it the same way? I think so. Okay. I mean, I should tell you probably a little bit more about my message because my last call was uh, during Hurricane Katrina. And Ooh. Yeah, my message was, yeah, I'm a little bit bored. There's really nothing to do right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of went on like that. <laughs> she wouldn't say it was after money. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you were, did you end up getting dad's account? No, uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, um, if, if your Facebook friends me, you saw I was with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I never financially did business with family or real close friends. Yep. 
Oh, so but once you started dating her, you called it off. Totally dropped it. Chasing the old man. Yeah, I think nice. I got a little bit of respect. Uh, oh, yeah. He's former Marine. Saw him okay. this weekend, too. All right. Um, yeah, just once. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, now I'm with you on that. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. with you on that. Yeah, but. if you want to keep friends and family, you just. See, you should <laughs> tell this. Okay, let me help you tell the story going forward. Now that I know what I know. You don't lead with. All right, let me get this right. Hang on a second. You don't lead with, I was going after her dad's money and I got his debt. You lead with, sweetie, I chose you over your dad's money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hoping he's worth like eight, bill, eight million, so it's a good story. So, But it doesn't matter how much he's worth. So, But that's your story. I chose you over his money. Yeah. So. Uh, three kids. Yes. Two in Florida, one here. Yes. Uh, your daughter, Lainey, a gymnast. Yes. Tell me she got that from her mother. I don't know where. Do you have gymnast skills? <laughs> I, I saw you on the trampoline. I did. About a week I, ago, I yeah. still do a flip. And you walked in here. I'm very impressed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just something she picked up. She's been doing it since she was two. She's been on the travel team with mostly teenagers for three years now. She's nine. So. Um, Is that every weekend? Traveling? No, no. Okay. This is a pretty short season. It's, okay. Yeah, it's not like baseball or soccer where it's year round. I mean, it, practices. Yeah. But. Okay. Yeah, she does private lessons. She's busy. Busy. Oh, yeah. They see you coming with those private <laughs> lessons, don't they? <laughs> um, well, God, I forgot, that, forgot what I was going to ask you on that last question, but that was so funny about... Uh, um, ah, oh, oh, I know what I was going to. So one of the neat things about joining BNI is you meet not only quality insurance agents like Chris, but you meet a lot of people like Chris who are very involved in the community. Many people in B&I are volunteers for community events. They've served on all these boards for years and years. I know you're big in the community. You sponsor some community events. Right. What's the last couple you've sponsored? Um, we sponsored, MetLife was actually one of the main sponsors of the SPCA event mm -hmm. um, down at the Coca Booth Theater. Um, that was a very good event. Um, and people are coming to adopt dogs? Yeah, I mean, that. it was, it was okay. Adopt Dogs, um, you know, big fundraiser for them. Yeah. It was, it was a really good event. Right. How many yeah. dogs do you guys have? Two. <laughs> Soon to be a third? No, 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 no. Yeah. We, yeah. We've got a puppy, a 70-pound, oh, seven-month-old. golden. So. How much does he eat? He eats a lot. And his dad was 110 pounds. So. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get him? Um, A friend. Okay. Yeah, a breeder. Yeah. All right. What are the names of the dogs? Um, Leah and Gus. And for any reason? No. Those names they came with? Yeah. Uh, Leah was actually a rescue dog. Okay. Uh, her and her brother was um, um, Luke. Yeah, but, um Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, yeah. Luke Star and Leia. Wars. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. It's actually Leia, but. Yeah. Okay. Because right. nobody could, the spelling you can't, I think it's L, was it L-E-I-A, I think? Princess yeah, Leia? Yeah, Princess yeah, so Leia. What a mess. Yeah. 70 pounds is a puppy. Yeah. Lord, he sleeps anywhere he wants? Um, Pretty much. <laughs> He moves stuff around. He's yeah. He's, oh, I bet yeah. Without trying, he's right? a little tank already. So. Now, does he have a good bark when the doorbell rings, and then he just licks everybody and wags his tail? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, yeah. but he's got. But you see, seventy pounds. Yes. I mean, seventy pounds is seventy pounds. Yeah. yeah. You... And <laughs> we got you know the tiled floor, so when he jumps in the couch, the couch is like a hockey puck. Yeah, yeah. Slides yeah. all the way back. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna. You have to yeah. anchor that down. Exactly. Uh, okay, this leads into a good question. What extra insurance should we have with pets? The umbrella. I mean, that's, you know, a really? dog bite. Yeah. So, okay. Right. If you buy, if you're smart enough to adopt a 70 pound dog, <laughs> would you as an insurance agent have any sympathy for somebody that adopted a 70 pound dog and all of a sudden they got a uh, scrape marks on their floor from their couch? <laughs> well, once again, that's, that's, <laughs> don't go claiming that. And, and, and scrapes aren't going to get covered anyway, so. 70 pounds. Yeah, that couch moves. You can't, yeah. No. Even if you wedge it up against the wall, he'd just start hammering away you, at the yeah, drywall. Yeah. yeah, you'd hear it too. No, that's right. He's up. <laughs> oh, 70 pound dog. I like that. Can oh, I say man. one thing real quick? Yep. I do have two other kids. They're <laughs> Tyler and Kaylee. I, don't, okay. I, didn't, I couldn't let this in without Vincent. Yep, go ahead. So. Tyler's actually an adult as of last week. So, 18 year old. Son. I saw the picture and I wanted to ask you how it feels to be the shortest Thoreau male now. Well, he's, I think I'm taller. I thought you posted he was. I Before I got there, my daughter thought he was, but I, oh. I still reign. Okay. Yeah. 
And then Kaylee, she's the middle child, but she's, I'm going to say this out loud. She's the smartest. So. Okay. Um, Certainly got that from her father. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. No yeah. gymnastic skills, but you're quite smart. We can, yeah. we can, that's the ex-wife. We can, Absolutely. She definitely got it from her say, dad. Say whatever we want. <laughs> and my son got his cunning personality. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Right. Why not? So. <laughs> my boys, I became the third tallest Manning male about eight years ago. It's like, really guys, they start, you know, dad, and you'll get that here right. in a little while. Next time you see him, dad, what's going on? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll knock you down right here. <laughs> I can't say, I can't give them the mom line. I brought you into this world. Right. I'll take care of it. Okay, okay. I'm going to tell your mother on you. Don't do that though. Insurance agents. You work for a lot of you. There are brand agents nationwide, State Farm, Allstate, all those. Right. And then you've got insurance agents. Right. So it's a bit different on what you do. Insurance agents, you can quote, you can call any carrier Kind of in the free world. Um. Yeah. There's. You, yeah. Yeah. There's captive agents in there, and there's yeah. um. Yeah, okay. Like I, I can shop. We assume, and I wrote notes down today because I was one of the questions I was going to ask you. Some agents own their own shop, right? Where they would have somebody answering the phone, two other agents. What do you have right now? What have you had before? What's the goal for you? Um. As when you I owned know, my uh, old office, I had six salespeople at the height of it um i own the property but the old company owned everything um here i have one salesperson um will grow to probably an admin but w i want to have a manageable base yep um that was one of the reasons i moved here it's all other stories but um yeah it's just me and my sales guy okay and it's so much more comfortable we, we're not driven on volume we're driven more on quality. Okay. So we, right. we have we have carriers for the volume people, but we want we want the better quality, the little bit higher value homes. And obviously, you've got like anybody in business, you've got numbers to hit. Exactly. Uh, but you're allowed to pretty much grow your office if you want to. If you want to add two people by April one of 2020, you're good to go. Oh yeah. You could do that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. In the perfect world, how many do you have? How many people is that office going to have? I I, don't, I probably will cap it at two other salespeople and okay. an admin. Right. I, I really that was like I said. I I I, I want to still be in touch with my customers. My old firm, um, a lot of the agents are always on vacation, which I'm jealous of. But they're not there when the customer. I I want to be the, if my name's on the door, I want to be accessible. Yeah. But I also love my vacation. So. Big. Well, well, you have to. Yeah. But we got Joel for that. Joel's always there. Okay, good for Joel. <laughs> In your previous life, your picture, your face, your happy face was on your car, and, <laughs> and we would laugh about this. You can't get a, you can't be a bad driver, Correct. And have your face on your car, right? And it says insurance agent. It did. <laughs> it's like a double whammy. It did. It's like they knew if you cut somebody off, they knew who to call, right? Exactly. And we never. So three and a half years. And I, the day I opened the door, I told my sales guy, which Joel was my first sales guy, um, there's a bounty on that. The first person that can get someone that calls in on my driving, because we, I thought I was going to get at least one a month. You think? Yeah. yeah. At least, you know, you can't be the perfect driver. And no. uh, yeah, we never got a single, I put a couple hundred dollar bounty on it. If someone called and you could Nobody them, ever called from that. Nobody ever called. Man, because that was out there. That was well done. I mean, done. complaining about it, but I mean, <clears throat> yeah. they, People call and got quotes, but my my thing was if someone was calling was complaining about my driving. Oh, okay. And All you right. sold them. Oh, I guess now. Okay. <laughs> it was it was more of a fun wager. Okay. Yeah. I know a uh, let's just say he's a a local signage company owner. Saw him a couple of months ago. I'm like, uh, I come here, truck's not wrapped. And he looked at me, goes, "We've known each other long enough. I can just say I'm a horrible driver. <laughs> so that's why he doesn't want his neighbor's face on the trucks." <laughs> And Joel's at the beach again this week. See, it's it's. You need a better employee handbook. <laughs> he's been at the beach two out of the last four weeks. Is he writing business while he he's there? Uh, no, not while he's there. Maybe we should <laughs> tell him he can get he can have Monday off, but he's got to have two policies back. Okay. <laughs> you guys know what's the life of a customer for you? If you do everything well, how long will customers on average stay with you? Some are lifers. Okay. Some absolutely love the companies they're with. I mean, 
my previous company has lots of those people. Is um, there an industry average six years, eight years? I mean, with more and more reports coming out, telling people to shop every three yeah. to nine years, um, you, you're getting a little bit less tenure. But I honestly, last week I had a lady with one company for 25 years. She had a $0 claim, one, okay. and they dropped her. So I got, now hopefully she's a lifer. I mean, yeah. that's a referral from BNI too. There so, you go. Yeah. Gotta so like that. 25 years. So I'm hoping I, I can keep her happy and she stays right where she's at. You, she would she would have stayed with the other company forever. She okay. Would've, she would have paid the premium. When somebody calls you to quote, first of all, quote prices from you and then they like it and they want to come on board with you. Do you have to run that through underwriting? No, we, we actually, um, we underwrite everything. There's okay. no surprises. So at least with Matt, um, there's, we write with other companies, but yeah. we don't, you know, oh yeah, this is your first payment. And then once it goes through underwriting in two months, your, your payment's raised. And How long does it take you to get a client approved? Um, every day. Okay. I, yeah. We, I mean, all right. it's all, it's all like, yeah. Except for the sheriff's deputies. Exactly. <laughs> right. Unless I, oh, I mean, I do have some investors with some properties in less desirable areas where sometimes they do have to go take pictures. Yeah. Then they have to get manually approved. But other than that. Basically, though, as long as the company rates are consistent and they follow through with any claims and you're available when somebody calls, in theory, shouldn't be changing much. Even with the wonderful commercials on national TV about this, that, and the other, you know. Uh, <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Here, let, let, and I'm not going to mention names. So we've been with a company for about 25 years up till when I joined BNI. Right. And when I joined, Jason Joiner mm -hmm. told me, he said, I'm not, I need to look at your. Uh, policies because mm. I'm sure you're paying more than what you should. And Jason saved us over a thousand dollars a year. And I think, okay, how? Because I went to my other agent and I told him, I said, look, I'm yeah. going to leave. You know, what can you do? He said, really nothing. It went up and up and up and up and up. And we never paid attention. And with, with, Jason, now it's it's been what seven years of it. It is staying maybe a couple of dollars, but why is this happening? Inflation. I mean, it, if you don't really pay attention to your policy every renewal and it goes up two three percent, it's not a big deal. But twenty five years, if it did it every six months, so you're looking at two to six percent, you know, every year, it, it's gonna. And there's some flat years. There's some years it goes down. Actually, um, Progressive just got another rate cut starting tomorrow. So there's, it's just the whole cost of living inflation. They just get it to you. And if you sell one of your clients goes to a competitor right. and getting a much better, I mean, a big time difference, right. you are not in a position to say, I want to keep you. So I am going to. So that's why I moved companies because I was a captive agent and I had that happen. And I couldn't do nothing. Now I now I have twelve carriers I can shop, so I can if MetLife gets to the point where it's too expensive for them, they can do travelers. Harvard, so it's a good Greg. thing to change insurance companies every five, ten years. Is that it, it, economic? Maybe not a good thing, but right. economically correct. It's. I mean, honestly, it, it, it's not a bad thing to shop. Now I'm telling you. I wouldn't go from a great company with great claims records to, I'll say Geico. And everyone there's probably going to people yeah. call it and say, oh, God, I love Geico. I wouldn't go from State Farm or Farm Bureau at life to Geico to save 100 bucks a year. No, that's different. Right. 100, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But 1200 I mean, then you got to start thinking. I mean, is it worth the 100 number? Is it worth... Um, is it worth the different claims, things you have to go through, the different garages? Yep. So See, those are the hidden things right. that people don't know. You may go to somebody that pricing it may be good, but they're just a horrible, they do a horrible job on your car. Right. I don't, yeah, I'm not, I understand when you, when you say that. When you've got a 
price, it was progressive, you said, it's about doing, getting ready to do? Another price. Okay. Decrease. Right. Kind of like the airline industry. When Delta comes out and says, all of our November fares are this, all the other airlines kind of have to get in line or do. Do insurance, will all the other agencies cut if one cuts? Um, once again, our state, um, the companies have to file. Okay. So they have to file for the rate cut, and then it's a procedure that's done. So MetLife actually has one as well in October, hopefully another one. But it's got to be put into place. So, and nobody sees those filings until it actually gets down. So it's one of those, yes, it does eventually happen. Is that a good thing that North Carolina regulates the insurance agency a, industry? Yes and no. Um, we we have the facility, and that's a whole other conversation. So, with the facility, a lot of good carriers we see, you know, most of our most of our customers are actually insured by the state of North Carolina. You might be serviced by a Farm Bureau, State Farm, at Life, but you're actually, you know, ceded to the state. Most states, their facilities are 1% to 2%. North Carolina hovers around 50%. What do you mean facility? You're actually insured by the state. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just being serviced by your agent. Okay. So. Other states, if you wanted to, if MetLife decided next Monday, we're not telling anybody, we are coming out with this rate cut. In other states, they wouldn't have to run it through? Majority of them, yeah. Okay. I, I, that's the sad part. We know it's our... We know it's coming in any day now, but in our system, we saw all the states, you know, we get little alerts. Yeah. You know. Georgia, is, Georgia it, just had a price cut. This they had. I mean, I'm like, oh, please, us. <laughs> is that consumer friendly when a company can just decide out of the blue, hey, next Monday we've got a rate cut coming up? Yeah. I mean, it can, because they're going to get it at renewal. So okay. um, it's very consumer friendly. Most agents don't like it because the renewals go down, but yeah. Um, it helps, especially someone that's rebuilding a book like myself. You know, I, I want to see a couple of rate cuts. So. Speaking of books, how often do does a book come on the market when somebody's getting ready to retire to sell their business? I'd say there's so many agents out here. It, it's got to yeah. happen. Here's here's the other <laughs> thing I asked that I and I was having a conversation with a uh, Allstate guy with Allstate the other day, just so I understand. You have to be approved by MetLife. You as Chris Thoreau to come on board and to be an agent with MetLife, right. you have to be approved. MetLife could hire a hundred of you on that same day and flood the market. And there's nothing you right. could do much do about that. Right. But the numbers won't work. They couldn't sustain that many people. Right. Tell me somebody knows who sold insurance before that's in charge of this says, you know what? 22 people's the number. We're at 21, we're going to do one more, and otherwise you're going to have some unhappy agents. Right. <laughs> yeah, and that, and another reason why I left my, I mean, where I was, there's an agent almost on every office. Yeah. I mean, every street corner. And um, I've heard they're putting two or three more in Holly Springs. I was yeah. like. But you're able to, because you can write different carriers. Right. Now, your conversations change with people immediately, didn't exactly. it? Because I know there was, uh, it, and there's a, there's nothing you could do as Chris when this brand is, this is what we charge. Exactly. I can't, you couldn't even take a hit out of your pocket if you wanted to, no. could you? North Carolina, $10. One I more can, time. <laughs> North Carolina, we're only allowed to give $10 as a thank you to customers. Okay. Or referral partners, but no rebating. But, but you like, couldn't lower their rate just oh, to no, say. no, no. I'm going to, instead of making 700,000 a year, I'm going to make 400, but I'm going to give 300 back to my clients yeah. to keep my clients. <laughs> Shoot, we're not paid enough for that. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> the other insurance agents want this to laugh at that. The, uh, <laughs> the ultimate goal is bundling. Yes. They, you get somebody to write home, auto, and life. Right. And that's your ultimate client. Right. Could be almost any age. Right. But I know that you love people with 15 year olds, don't you? Because no. that means they got a driver <laughs> coming. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, North Carolina, it's three years you know, driving experience. So the first three years are going to be the toughest. We yeah. get, um, my office is just west of Morrisville. So even foreign drivers, yeah. um, three years, is, they get a big stop on the wrist price-wise. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember way back when it was the same thing, yeah. first three years. So. And if you don't have cars, right. 
together you take a hit yeah that. because most most companies are going to give you the multi-card discount so yeah one in doing some research on metlife which one of the things you've already corrected for me which was a bummer <laughs> on the defensive driving course, but it, which tells me things vary state to state right. based on what kind of what they'll let you do right. there. If you live in other states, there's a 7% defensive driving course rebate or discounts. Like, right. okay, right. that would be good. That's actually smart to do, right. but that's another, that's another podcast. It's like with the health insurance industry, why don't you pay for preventative maintenance instead of rehab afterwards? Make my knee, you know, right. but anyways, that's another podcast. Up to 15% discount for good grades in high school or college. I would not have qualified for either one. Of in those. other states. Oh, in other states, yeah. not here. Oh, yeah. North Carolina. Uh, we should reward our young people <laughs> for good grades. Too many smart people. They sure, let's go with that. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll go with that. So. Yeah. yeah, I would have never qualified for that. Right. My right. sister would have. My brother and my sister in high school would have. My brother in college would have. And I'd have been one of those right on the cusp. So, would your kids have qualified? Kaylee would. Kaylee, okay. definitely. Okay. Oh, the smart one. Yeah, yeah excuse smart me. One, yeah. The smart one. She okay. just turned 16, so we'll see okay. how that goes. Did you, are you able to write in Florida? I am. Okay. I need to, yeah. All right. Will you be involved in that? <laughs> well, since I'm paying for it, I might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have an ultimate client income, part of town, number of kids? years working any of that is there a wheelhouse client you look for so we met we have grand protect so um without getting really salesy we want the over four hundred thousand dollar house we want the custom houses because our dwelling is guaranteed replacement cost Good. it's not a guessing game like ho3 so if you're building a custom house we have the policy that they want so that's our wheelhouse we want we want the custom houses all the way up to two and then i can actually write Chubb Insurance Company for the ultra luxury. So, ultra luxury. Yeah. Which is what? Two plus. So a lot of carriers will stop at one million um, in North Carolina. They won't write over a million dollar house. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Some will let they'll do it on a case by case, get approval, but a lot of them won't go over a million. That's good for us to know not to buy bigger houses, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, you come to me. <laughs> yeah, can I get the second floor insured by you right. and the first floor right. insured by somebody else? So, yeah, we're, wow. we're really looking. I mean, that's uh. that's our wheelhouse. Um, new construction. Um, we actually have really great rates on new construction. And that's the other thing that comes up with other guests we've had on the show, that when somebody's buying a house from a builder, they assume they have to go with everything the builder offers right. them. And that's not true. No, no. They should call you. They should call another realtor call another home inspector, get there, get somebody that's going to be looking out for them. Yeah. Not again, not knocking builders. Right. That's their job and they should do that. Right. And, and at least have someone review the policy. Yep. Exactly. I, um, I've got someone that's buying a $800,000 house in Perry right now. And it's got a 1% wind and hail, which you usually see at the beach if they can get wind and hail from the state, mm -hmm. but 1%, you know, an $8,000 deductible, if they've got to replace a roof where it should be your normal 1000 or $2,500 deductible. Ooh. So, I, like, this is why you have help reading through your policies. Yep. You don't want a 1% win and hail probably. Okay. Kind of like a lawyer, if you're getting ready to buy a business, exactly. you'd want them to look through it just right. to say, hey, this, this could, whether you tell them right or wrong, this could be an issue or you don't need that. Right. Okay. Right. Pretty simple. All right, Chris, where can people get in touch with you? What number can they call? 919-267-4188. Um, we are here with Chris Thoreau, MetLife Insurance. If you need somebody, just call him to have him look over your you say four, over your policy. Yeah. Couldn't jump. Man, draw a policy review. <laughs> long, long night driving back from Charlotte last night, spending time with my grandson, Oliver, who, by the way, is spectacular. Thanks for everybody asking. <laughs> uh, we found a new way to feed him. He didn't want to be fed in his chair. So I held him while he stood on the counter and my wife fed him and he was totally happy to be fed that way. And we're totally happy to feed him that way. So, but give Chris a call. Uh, like I said, if you do anything else, just have him look over your policy. He's somebody local. He's been here. He's going to stay here. Uh, give him a call. Make sure you are covered because we don't, we know, I bet we're 20% smart on what we should have as renters, homeowners, drivers, life insurance, all that stuff. So go give Chris a call, go talk to him, go visit his chapter. Thursday mornings at 730 at Hope Community Church on Buck Jones Road in Raleigh. And we'll see you next week on Triangle B&I.
You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.